was hailed as the greatest invention of the 20th century. It's a mechanism around which we believe an entirely new it's art It's as will phenomenal of a change, if one of the biggest changes that the industry's ever endured. Marvelous invention, Vitaphone. We were determined to break the barrier of silence and bring full life to the screen by giving it a voice. Since the first decade of the 20th century, inventors had been experimenting with creating sound film, but most inventors were faced with a series of problems, mainly amplification and synchronization. Thomas Edison developed a sound film device called the Kinetophone in 1913, but the public didn't react well, and after a fire burned down his sound studio, he ceased his pursuit of sound film. In 1922, Western Electric, the manufacturing branch of Bell Labs, created a sound system that would work to synchronize sound with film. What separated this invention from previous ones were improvements of the microphone, transfer of recorded sound to electrical currents, and amplification of the sound. This microphone changes the sound waves into electrical vibrations, which are amplified here and sent along these wires to the mixer room. Western Electric soon gave an experimental demonstration of their new invention at Yale, which ended in success and prompted the company to push forward promotion of their new technology. However, they were repeatedly rejected by every major Hollywood studio. But in the mid-twenties, a little studio called Warner Brothers took interest. Before sound film, Warner Brothers was a small family-owned business. It was originally founded by Albert, Sam, Harry, and Jack Warner, four brothers from a large family. They first joined the movie industry in 1903 as a traveling exhibition business and later ran a theater in 1907, running the movies, collecting tickets, and playing the music themselves. In 1925, Nathan Levinson, a radio specialist for Western Electric, told Sam Warner about their new sound picture system, and the two attended a demonstration in New York of the product. It was this encounter that changed film history forever. Sam Warner was immensely impressed with the system. My brother phoned me that there's an apparatus I should see, and after seeing it, I then made up my mind that through this instrument, talking pictures would be possible. Warner Brothers bought the invention, renamed it Vitaphone after recently acquiring the Vitaphone Corporation, and immediately began production of sound films. The company invested $100,000 into making sound film, a huge gamble for a company on the edge of financial collapse. The first film Warner Brothers made with this technology was Don Juan in 1926, with no dialogue but added sound effects and orchestra. Wait a minute, wait a minute, you ain't heard nothing yet. On October 6, 1927, the movie The Jazz Singer starring Al Jolson became the first talking picture with actual dialogue. This film was a major turning point in film history, as it was when sound film truly gained its great influx of popularity. The Warner Brothers Theater in New York City, where The Jazz Singer is now playing, is sold out for many weeks in advance. The audience loved the dialogue scenes of the film, and it was then that Warner Brothers realized people wanted talking pictures and began its journey to becoming one of the biggest film production companies in America. Audiences had never experienced anything like it before, and they loved it. According to William Stevenson, president of the Cinematograph Exhibitors Association, you may take it from me that the talkies have come to stay. They are a better entertainment than silent films, and the public insists on having them. Some producers and executives welcome the change as well. Douglas Fairbanks said he was willing to try anything once, and some producers believed it would give their studios an edge. However, other producers and executives were skeptical and didn't think that the talkies would be popular. Joe Shank, a movie executive, said talkies are no more than a passing phase. Robert Ellis, an actor and director, supported the new technology, but still said the film began silent and I believe it will remain so. However, the expected transition back into silence never came. Sound films had swept the nation into a frenzy of excitement, a flock toward change, and a drastic restructuring of film. The exchange of silent film with sound film was not an easy or quick process. Once it was realized that the talkies were here to stay, film executives had to make the choice to switch over to sound film and install all the necessary equipment, a very expensive process. Fox Film Corporation was the first to start producing sound film after Warner Brothers, quickly purchasing their own system, Movie Tone. 
Other studios followed suit, and by the end of the 1920s, over 40% of movie theaters had been rewired for sound film. European industries and Asian industries were, were kind of slower to, to kind of move into this technology. They were slower to adopt for numerous reasons, uh, some of them industrial, some of them kind of aesthetic. Actors, directors, and technicians alike had to explore this entirely new medium. Now, actors had to add a whole new aspect to their art. Some actors with foreign, funny-sounding, or simply uncharacteristic voices were run out of the business, such as John Gilbert. The ones that managed to stay in the business had to change their acting style. They could now convey their feelings with words, so their movements could be less dramatic, and had to be for the low-quality sound equipment to be able to pick up the actors' voices. The 1952 film Singing in the Rain depicts this very phenomenon. She's got to talk into the mic. I can't pick it up. Other film workers had to change their practices, too. The sensitive microphones would pick up any sound on set, so cameramen could barely move their cameras as it would make too much noise. In addition, directors could no longer shout the directions to actors as the scene was going, but rather needed to wait until the scene was done, or cut and start over. Hollywood was overall shaken up by sound film. According to a New York Times article from 1928, the beginning of a new era is recognized by all hands, but no one yet knows what it pretends. In the meantime, the whole industry is nervous and inclined to jump whenever anyone says boo. The exploration of the new medium was overall difficult, yet successful, and by the time the 1930s came around, silent film had been exchanged for the new popular medium, the talkies. However, not everyone welcomed the change with open arms. Many actors and other film workers disliked the new art. Charlie Chaplin, in an interview in 1952, said, I think the poetry of the theater has been lost. You see, uh, I think art form is only a really a great form by virtue of its limitations. D.W. Griffith, the film pioneer, said, We do not want now and we shall never want the human voice with our films. But despite the negative reactions, sound film proved itself a positive change. Sound film created a more realistic and deeper film experience. Wesley Stout, a writer for the Saturday Evening Post, said, The screen reached them only with images. The actors had no more reality than the watcher invested them with. But once an actress spoke, the real woman broke through. Her personality reaches out and shakes the audience out of its private dreams. They are forced to take note of character now. Sound becomes immensely important, I think, in shaping the atmosphere and the aesthetic of, of, a, of a mood and a feeling. According to Graeme Turner, a professor of cultural studies, the feature film was not firmly established as the main attraction in the cinema until the introduction of optical sound with the jazz singer in 1927. The feature film, like the realist novel, sets out to construct a realistic world to provide psychological depth for its characters and to place itself in the notions of real life. This new type of film had a huge societal impact. Especially during the time of the Great Depression, the advanced talkies served as an optimistic escape from the harsh realities of the time. William Hayes, the former head of the Motion Picture Producers and Distributors Association, stated in 1934 that no medium has contributed more greatly than the film to the maintenance of the national morale during a period featured by revolution, riot, and political turmoil in other countries. Film Forevermore would serve as escape, comfort, or hope for audiences, all because sound became available, opening up a whole new level of cinema. Tom Sherrick, the former president of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, said, Film is a reflection of society, both present and past. I think the film and its innovations sometimes has to catch up to society, but sometimes it leads society too. I think the, the kind of magic that cinema already contained at this point of the silent era was, was able to kind of be given something entirely new, and entirely kind of meaningful in an entirely different way when sound was incorporated. Today, most people can recognize iconic movie themes the second they start playing, Audiences sob over emotional scenes with heart-wrenching soundtracks. And individuals recite famous movie quotations. You can't handle the truth! The invention of sound film transformed cinema, and the world would be far different today if the Warner Brothers had never taken the leap they did to purchase Western Electric's invention. It was the encounter between Western Electric and Warner Brothers that led to a dramatic exploration of technology and exchange of film mediums, changing society, film, and the world for the better. Watch for the mail. I'll never fail.